Oral anti-diabetic drugs are used for type 2 di people with type 2 diabetes. Again, remember, we, we're going for lifestyle modification first. That's diet, exercise, smoking cessation, and weight loss. Um, then oral, uh, oral anti-diabetic drugs might not be effective unless the person also does all these other things. They very much work together in combination. And lastly, we have inhaled insulin, which is exubera, and I, I, we're not going to go into this in this class. All right, hypoglycemia. When we give people insulin or any kind of anti-diabetic drug, we are risking lowering their blood sugar too much, especially if for whatever reason the person doesn't eat or drink after taking um, their insulin dose. It is defined as a blood sugar level less than 50. Mild cases can be treated with diet such as a higher intake of protein and a lower intake of carbohydrates. That's what we prefer. Milk, in general, is better than orange juice. Now, this is all depending on can you get to milk within a timely uh, manner. Um, because the protein content in milk and the carbohydrate content is not going to shoot the blood sugar up as dramatically and as fast it's going to slowly raise the blood sugar and, and maintain the blood sugar at a reasonable level whereas orange juice is going to shoot the blood sugar way up and then it's going to metabolize and drop right back down again so we may end up with a rebound hypoglycemia if we just use a simple uh, sugar source like a candy or, or a glucagon Symptoms of hypoglycemia early on, we're looking at confusion and irritability. Those are, the, those are quite often the first two that you see uh, that are commonly, you're, you're able to see well. We may see a tremor, sweating, pale, clammy skin, uh, maybe hunger, you may have a headache, there may be blurred vision. As the, as the hypoglycemia continues and is not treated, you might end up with seizures. You also may end up with coma and death if people don't recognize this and treat it appropriately. We have glucose elevating drugs. Uh, people will often carry uh, tablets that can be used in the buckle space. Uh, if they're in the hospital, we can give them um, high concentrated dextro solution. Glucagon, which are shots. There's also diazocide. All of these are simple carbohydrates, which are going to rapidly increase blood sugar, but it doesn't last. So you have to come up with some other way to maintain the blood sugar uh, within a normal range so you don't get that rebound hypoglycemia. All right, nursing implication for these drugs. A thorough history before we start all of this. Uh, we're looking for things that might alter the glucose levels. We're looking at cultural factors. You're looking at what kind of diet they typically eat. And we're also looking at the person's time orientation. Are they present oriented or are they future oriented? The dominant society in the United the dominant culture in the United States tends to be future oriented. So you can talk to them about, you know, you got to keep this blood sugar under control or you're going to end up having problems that maybe you're going to lose your toes or maybe you're going to go blind or have kidney problems. You know, that, that, the future oriented culture gets that. Quite a, quite a few people, quite a few cultures are present oriented, which means you live for today, the future is not here yet, don't worry about it. And it's difficult to get them um, to change their diet and their exercise habits and to buy into this whole thing about sticking your finger for blood sugar and taking insulin and all that other kind of stuff. Vital signs. Blood glucose levels, especially the A1C, we want to check. How has their blood sugar been over the last two to three months? 
potential complications and drug interactions. Some of the uh, oral oral um, anti-diabetic stuff really does have interactions with some of the medications. So you got got to be looking them up in your uh, drug guide. We need to assess their ability to consume food. Are they conscious? If they're not conscious, you can't really get them to eat. Need to assess for nausea and vomiting. Hypoglycemia is a problem if you give them the drugs and then they don't eat. Also, if the person is NPO for a test or a procedure, you have to clarify it with the physician or primary care provider. Are we given these drugs or are we not given these drugs because they can't eat? Keep in mind that the overall concerns for anybody with diabetes increases when they're under stress, they have an infection, they have an illness or a trauma, or they're pregnant or lactating. All of those interfere with normal carbohydrate metabolism and insulin production. Thorough patient education is essential regarding the disease itself, the diet and exercise recommendations. You know, we put people on a low fat and low carbohydrate diet. Um, exercise. Uh, it is recommended. American Diabetic Association recommends 30 minutes of exercise a day. Uh, we need to talk to them about insulin administration and how to store it. I'm going to refer you to box 31-4. Please know the information in that box. Uh, it's talking about site rotation and timing and storage and potential complications. Please know all that stuff.